thank you for welcoming us to wherever you are today. We are so excited to bring you an incredible promise from the Word of God today. We have a special treat this week. Um, we uh, online and on campus because our very own Dallas Mora will be leading us with the promise this week. Hey, Dallas, how hey, are you? I'm doing good. Pastor, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Good. All right, everybody, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53. This is an amazing chapter. So much going on in this chapter. So much. <laughs> so open up to your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 53. Our promise is going to come from verse 5. We're going to be in a couple different areas, and we're going to walk through this today. Listen, get something, take some notes today, write some things down. We're going to be talking about certain terminology today, mm -hmm. what certain words mean. Right. I know, Dallas, there are words that are in Isaiah 53 that sometimes if you're reading in a certain version, you may be like, what does that mean? Exactly. And so we're going to break <laughs> that down, uh, not just for you, but with you today. And so if you guys would just uh, write that down, we've had an incredible uh, uh, we've had incredible moments up to this point, man, through our worship and just every single bridge, and we're going to bridge out of this back into worship, and when we get to the end of this discussion today, we're going to do something really special, and that is we're going to take communion together, Right. and uh, so make sure you got all that ready and uh, good to go. And we're going to take an opportunity to have communion, and then we're going to ascend back out of here in worship and praise, just giving God glory for what we have learned and uh, for receiving the promise. So Isaiah chapter 53 and verse uh, 5. Yeah. So it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Now this is a... Uh, a singular verse within a series of larger verses that describes what we call the suffering servant, which for us as believers in Jesus is the, um, it's a series of passages that we use as a proof text to say that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the promised Messiah that um, is to bring salvation to everybody. Now, this is also Dallas. Isaiah 53 is kind of the go-to really as the evidentiary facts if you were to speak into somebody who did not believe Jesus was Messiah, mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 is the place to go. Exactly. Because there's not a lot that there's not a lot of wiggle room there. There's really not. And really no question about who this is. Is that correct? Right. Uh, they may try to argue some stuff about it maybe just being just about David or maybe a few other individuals, but the reality is this is about the Messiah. Even if they go into the context like, well, earlier in Isaiah they're talking about it being the, the nation of Israel you still have this context of every time, not every time, most of the time when they're talking about the Messiah, the Messiah is synonymous with Israel. He takes on his country. He represents his country of Israel. And if you talk to anybody who is um, is Jewish mm -hmm. that has uh, come into a belief system of Jesus as Messiah, mm -hmm. they will tell you that when they're talking to their brothers or sisters or family, that that's going to be their go-to is Isaiah 53. Right. Because there really is no answer. It is wrapped up in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. So, But like I said, there's a promise here, but I think that uh, a lot of people struggle to live out the promises that are, are presented here in this passage. Yeah, because it's not just one promise, right? Right. There's several things happening here. There are several promises, <laughs> yeah. So... Like, we, we've been talking, and as you were kind of putting this all together, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about how um, people struggle to live out these promises. Like, not just one, but even just as good as they are and mm -hmm. as awesome as they are and as hope-filled as they are, there's still kind of this struggle um, to, to kind of live that out. So why do you think people struggle to live out the promises we kind of find right here? I think there's a lot of things that take place, but I think the primary thing that people struggle with is either they don't understand what these promises are and what they really encapsulate, or they don't. They feel like they don't deserve it. They feel like they don't deserve these promises that are being given to them in the Scriptures. And um, and so we kinda, we're going to talk about that today. And to tackle these, I want to at first uh, go back a verse to verse 4. Okay. Uh, so this is Isaiah 53, verse 4, and it says, Surely he, was, he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Now, what, this, what's, what, are we, what is he saying he's borne our griefs? When we look at the word grief, uh, the word there, uh, it's, and I'm going to butcher all the Hebrew, <laughs> and I apologize in advance, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's koli, and it, it means sickness. Like that's sickness, that's what it boils right. down to is sickness. 
And then sorrows, it's a mechub, and it means it's like a physical and mental pain. That's right. And so you have these things coming together. And what if we were to take the Bible as it stands, if we were to believe what the Word of God says, the suffering servant takes on our griefs and our sorrows. He takes on our sickness, meaning he brings healing to physical sickness like flu, COVID, uh, all these things. And then he also brings uh, physical healing, such as so migraines, um, you know, Stubbed my toe. That's a pain that is a next level, right? <laughs> right. He brings healing also, though, to some of the deeper pains like trauma, um, anxiety, fear, these things that can freeze up an individual. And in the name of Jesus, all these things must, in fact, go. Yeah. So grief, sickness, sorrow is pain, physical, mental, mm-hmm. smitten. You know, severely stricken. Right. Right? So all these different affliction, which is like an oppressive, it's like this oppressive thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we're kind of walking through this, how about like when we talk about healing, Mm -hmm. there's something that always comes up when you talk about healing. And that is, why does God heal some Mm. and not others? And that is such a key, like... Especially for us, like we're at the healing place, right? right? So it's like um, when people come and they talk about, well, what do you do if you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, which right. is a fantastic question. Right. It's an amazing question. I think sometimes we're dismissive of people when they ask questions like that, but it's an amazing question. Absolutely. Because if you really believe in the gospel, if you really believe in Jesus as Savior, as Lord, as Messiah, mm-hmm. then you're not going to have all the answers. Exactly. And that's 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 called the sovereignty of God, right? right? God is still sovereign over everything. And so this question comes up of, you know, I've had this illness my whole life and I never got healed. Mm. Like, what do I do with that? What about people that struggle with disabilities mm-hmm. and maybe they get prayed for and they never get healed? Yeah. What about that? Uh, well, before we get to that, I don't want to, like, like Pastor said, we are the healing place. We believe in healing, and maybe you're at home, you need some healing. Leave some stuff in the chat. We're going to pray for you guys. We have moderators uh, watching online. They're going to pray for you guys. So if there's something, maybe you have one, like a, a sickness, maybe there's a physical or mental issue that you need prayer for, please leave in the chat. Mm-hmm. We want to pray with you. But what do we do about those lifelong things? As I'm, I, Pastor, you know, as an individual, I'm an individual who has kind of a, a lifelong situation with my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I, my ankles don't work right. I've had reconstructive surgeries. I would love to be able just to walk normal and <laughs> not kill a pair of shoes in a month, uh, but I can't. And so it's a, it is a it's a struggle. And I know that I understand. I'm saying this because there is a mental anguish that people go through. They go, you know, is there something wrong with me? They begin to wonder, you know, does God not love me, or have mm. I done something wrong yep. in the situation? And I wanted to point us to uh, um, an interesting woman, and um, her name is uh, Joni Erickson Tata, and um, she's really interesting because. Joni was the daughter of an Olympian, um, a, well, a, a backup Olympian, I guess. I'm not sure how you said it. he was. On, he was on the reserve team for the U.S. American wrestling team, and back in like the 30s, I believe. So she grew up in this very athletic family and all sort of stuff. And one day, as a young girl, she went to go diving because that was her thing. She was a swimmer. She was a diver, and while she was trying to dive, she misjudged the depth of the water in the Chesapeake Bay, and she ended up cracking her spine, leaving her paralyzed like she became a quadriplegic and um, during this time frame she had to go through a lot of healing a lot of therapy uh, she learned to paint with her mouth yeah and she became a singer she became a writer yep. but she held on to this belief that god was going to heal her 100 uh she in fact she's quoted as saying that she would call her friends up when it first happened saying well, you're gonna see me run down the street one day yep well in 2013 45 years later she's still a quadriplegic and they're asking her about her faith and she says this i want to read it because uh, it's just such a good quote. God may remove your suffering, and that will be great cause for praise. But if not, he will use it. He will use anything and everything that stands in the way of his fellowship with you. Mm-hmm. So let God mold you and make you, transform you from glory to glory. That's the deeper healing. Sometimes, no, God does not bring the complete physical healing that we want but he will transform us, and he will use what you're going through to reach the world. Wait, Paul himself talks about there was a something he dealt with, some sort of pain, and there's a lot of descriptions. There's a lot of uh, speculation what that might be. Yep. We don't know what it was, but God said, no, 
I'm not going to remove this because I'm going to use it for you one day. And I remember as a kid, they used to have these things called the uh, a- ABC After School Special. Yeah. And, um, you know, movies like Boy in a Plastic Bubble and <laughs> kind of all that. Right. But there was one on Johnny, mm-hmm. and and it kind of told her story. Mm-hmm. It told, you know, that she was really tracking the way her dad did, kind mm-hmm. of Olympian type yeah. uh, of a swimmer mm-hmm. and a diver. And I remember her also saying, uh, and this was just I may, maybe like a couple years ago, mm. of her saying that she had to get past this point of she would get so frustrated with people when they would come up and say, can I pray for you? Or mm. can I pray for your healing? That she she would get so frustrated. And her point was that she had almost got to the place where she had completely relinquished her faith to be healed because God had used that in such a way, mm-hmm. which I think we can even go maybe too far. No, absolutely. To where now it's like we we don't even we don't even have the faith anymore. We've just relinquished that. Okay, God's going to use this. I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we're not really still believing that it can fully be healed. Right. Absolutely. And I want to encourage you guys. The key word here is balance in all this theology. I mean, when I was preparing this message, I was I've seen um, some individuals take this go a way that was heretical and just went crazy. And then I've seen people go the opposite direction where there's almost no healing whatsoever. There is balance. In fact, write that in the chat right now. Write the word of balance because there is a balance to the word of God. Uh, I like what Pastor Scott has to say. Normally he goes, he's called the Holy Spirit. He's not the hyper spirit. He's yeah. not the under spirit. He's right. called us to be here. That's right. And so there's a balance to the scriptures at, at all times. Okay, so we understand the healing, mm-hmm. but what does the suffering servant pierced for our transgression mean? That's a lot of that's a lot of terminology. There. The <laughs> suffering servant pierced for our transgression. Right. Well, like we said, the suffering servant is Jesus, and he was pierced for our transgressions. And we can we can easily overlay the concept of the piercing with his crucifixion. When he was on the cross, they literally um, pierced his hands and his feet, nailing him to the cross. And then even at his death, they pierced his side uh, to make sure he was dead. So we, we can put that together, but what is the transgressions? Transgressions are willful acts of rebellion against God. God. These are things denying what uh, what who God is, denying that he's even your God, putting other things before him, uh, lying, adultery, all these other things. Uh, well, I like to call them the top 10. We find them the 10 <laughs> commandments. <laughs> but it's these willful acts of defying God. That's our transgressions. You know, the powerful thing in verse 5 where it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, that word wounded, you know, Mm -hmm. we've been talking about the words grief and sorrow and smitten and afflicted. Mm -hmm. That word wounded means uh, to profane, defile, Mm. or pollute. Mm -hmm. He was defiled for our transgressions. Yeah. He was profaned Mm. for, I mean, he was the, the perfect son of God was polluted. Right. For my willful actions. Absolutely. Which I don't know about you, but for me, that is where it is super hard to wrap my brain around the Son of God being polluted for my willful actions against Him. Yeah, absolutely. And that, my friends, is where healing comes in. Right. (laughs) That is where grace, that is where you start to really begin to have an understanding as much as we can Mm -hmm. of grace and what real mercy is. Right. Right? Okay. So um, it talks about uh, transgressions. Then it says, how about being crushed for our iniquities? Yeah, so with iniquities, uh, it goes a little bit deeper than just the uh, actions that we do. These are the, um, the twisted character and nature of an individual. Uh, in the beginning, uh, God created man, and he called man good. Like what's in the scriptures is right there in the book of Genesis. He created man, and man was good. However, because of the actions of Adam and Eve, sin entered the world. By nature, we are now born in sin. Mm-hmm. That is kind of who we are as individuals. Um, and now, of course, we have everybody's like, you know, well, but I'm a good person. Well, look at Mark chapter 10, verse 18. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God at all. Mm. No one, period, is good. And so uh, the twisted nature of man is that, um, is that aspect that we're talking about, these iniquities that we have. 
Um, and it doesn't mean that we're not good according to the world standards. Right. You can be a good person according to the world standard, but in a kingdom mindset, in the eyes of God, we're born into this sinful nature. Now we could say, "Hey, that's not my fault." Right. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a baby. I'm just. But that is a part of our humanity. Right. That is the scourge, so to speak. <laughs> that is the stain upon our humanity that w- we are born into this world. Right. Selfish. Right. Mm-hmm. Just imagine this: when you're a baby. What happens? Somebody's putting it in, right? And somebody's changing it. I mean, that's the reality. Really? It is like me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. It is everything's about me. Right. And if we don't go beyond that fleshly nature of me, 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 mm-hmm. then we will always be that way. Right. Then you that's where you have adults acting like children and all those other things. Well, God has created a manner in which we can become his children, not just his creation, right? But his children, right? And what that means is, is now we are adopted into this family of God, and now the very thing that has kept us from Him mm-hmm. through Jesus now, because of all these words that we're talking about, because of the crushing, because of the being smitten, because of Him bearing the weight of our grief, now we can come to the Father, and now in His eyes. Mm. We are good. Exactly. Not according to the world standards, right. but according to his standards through Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. Now, there, there's some that are like, well, um, the quote unquote sin nature. Again, we, we talked about some of the willful things we do. Um, and they, people act like, well, that's just natural. We just naturally do these things. Mm. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus, period, yep. 100%. You don't have to live according to the sinful lifestyle, according to the sin nature that was you. You can grow. You can become what God has called you to be. Yep. And there's some that are watching this right now. Maybe you're, you're watching this on the stream. Maybe you're watching a replay, and you're holding on to one of these pains. You're holding on to mm. uh, maybe some physical pain that just going on in your life. Maybe you're holding on to some, some mental anguish or some sorrow or something like that. And maybe you're just holding on to some sin nature because you feel like this is just who I am. Yep. I was created this way. I, I was raised in, a, in an environment that this is norm, normal for us to be this way. You don't have to be that way. That's right. And some of you hold on to because, honestly, you feel like you don't deserve the grace to move past these things. Mm. And uh, and that's really, uh, that's what breaks my heart the most, to be honest, is there are people who legitimately just don't believe that there is healing and grace for them. Okay, so like we, like Dallas has a message, and we've got a flow chart here, but we also... You know, with the online, <laughs> one thing about on campus is, on campus is, it's not just willy nilly free for all, but mm-hmm. it does give us an opportunity that as the Holy Spirit is speaking, we can kind of shift everything that's going on and in the moment we can move. And I really sure. feel like this is an opportunity for us to kind of make a shift online. Listen, you need to lean in right now, okay? And I've told you this before physically lean in right now, (laughs) like lean into this, because Jesus wants to heal you entirely, Mm -hmm. not just like a portion of you, but all of you. When Dallas read um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, you're a new creation Mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Well, I don't I look the same, right? You know, maybe I even feel the same. Mm. But in Him, when you take that deep dive in Him, and you get this right here, you have an understanding that He bore your grief and what your grief is. Why is it important that we know the Hebrew? Because now you really know what your grief is. It's right. sickness, right? It's not just grief. Mm-hmm. And what do you do with sickness? You, you see get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, you get rid of it. Well, what do we do with grief? A lot of times, That's we right. hold on to it. Mm-hmm. We hold it. And so when you really know what that word grief means, now Mm -hmm. the terminology in your own brain shifts. Why? Because now you're a new creation. You have a new understanding. And that understanding is my grief is not just grief. It's a sickness. And if it's a sickness, I need it gone, right? Because grief over time can become a friend. Mm Mm-hmm. Like if you're living in a, a situation where you're feeling abandoned or maybe you were with your family and you've lived with grief for years and years and years, you almost become comfortable with that grief. And now if you don't have that grief, who am I? Mm. Like if you've been a victim your whole life, what happens when you're no longer a victim? Right. 
right? And and that is why a lot of people will stay in abusive situations mm -hmm. because if they can get just a percentile of affirmation, then they will take the abuse because that's a way of holding on to that. That's their identity. That's become their identity. Exactly. And so in all of this, when we're talking about all this and we talk about sorrow and you see sorrow not just as tears, but you see it as like physical and mental anguish, mm -hmm. That totally changes your aspect, and now you find someone mm -hmm. who has taken all of this, right? all of it, everything that you've ever felt, everything that's kept you oppressed, everything that's kept you depressed, everything that's ever been put on you that is not of God can be released off of you through Jesus. Right. And when we talk about entirely, there's a word for that in the New Testament. When There are several different words for healing. Mm-hmm. Some of them even are words that we use today. Therapy, right? Therapeuo. That that's a walking out. That's a stretching out. You know, that's a that's a walking out. Your healing. It's a progressive thing. Sure. It's not an immediate thing. It's a it's a progressive thing. You got to do some stuff. Pharmakia. That's mm. you know that's a word that we know. Right. Right. <laughs> so all these different terms, but there is a term for for healed that actually has another connotation, which is salvation, mm -hmm. and that word is sozo. Mm -hmm. That is physical, mental, and spiritual. Right. And I, I think a lot of times we take on this thing of healing and we only look at it in terms of physical. Yeah. We only look at it in terms of spiritual, but even when you get healed spiritually... Sometimes you got to walk through some emotional baggage. Absolutely. So you gave your life to Jesus out of this feeling abandoned in your life, mm -hmm. feeling you were less than because of your condition, mm -hmm. right? We're not going to call it disability right. because you pressed through it, right? And you lived your life through it. Mm -hmm. But but in the context of all that, there came a moment where you met this person. Exactly. Where Isaiah fifty three came to life in Dallas Moore's life. The the abandon, uh, the insecurity, mm -hmm. the the um, the um, the lack of agape, mm -hmm. not the lack of caring or love, because right. your mother was just amazing, absolutely amazing. But there was that agape, fatherly love that you didn't have, right. and then you found this. But when you gave your life to Christ, I would say that you probably had to walk through some emotional things. Oh yeah, absolutely. So your spirit was healed, mm -hmm. but you still had to walk through emotional things. Why do you think that is? Uh, I, to learn, to grow, to um, to equip me to do what I do today. I had to learn to lean into the Father, lean into discover this, because there are so many people out there watching right now who don't know that agape love. Mm -hmm. And that's such a, um, if you know Celestine, that's a massive part of who we are, the ministry we do, is that we want people to know they're loved. Yeah. Regardless, across the board. We're a couple of devoted geeks <laughs> devoted to letting you know you're loved. Is that right? Exactly. That's okay. It. You got I've it. Been listening. Check mark. I've been listening. <laughs> so but that's that's our mission. He literally turned what was a a wound that the enemy could use to keep me trapped and enslaved. Yeah. 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 And yeah. he turned it into a weapon to release other people. Yeah. And that's that's what he does with some of the stuff is maybe you're struggling with this, some stuff and you're like, Man, how come I have my healing on this? Maybe he's trying to work you into something, train you to see some things. So you can see people who have been struggling with the same thing. And, you know, the New Testament has a lot to say about when we get healed, we now can minister to people that same healing because we came out of it. Exactly. Right? So it's like now that that void you had in your life come to the realization of this and not just walking through the spirit man, mm -hmm. but being a new creation, thinking differently. Mm -hmm. And then when you became a man having to act differently mm -hmm. than what was modeled to you. Right. As a man. Right. What was modeled to you, and then having to change that. That's a hard process. Oh, yeah. Even when you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> right? Exactly. So don't think that you're walking this life out, and all of a sudden you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you came into a relationship with Jesus. Now it's like, I got all the answers, I'm good, I'm not going to have to walk through anything. Just know... The enemy's not going to leave you alone. Right. He's going to come to your place of the biggest insecurity you have. I was just reading this this morning mm -hmm. where Jesus is baptized and the Father comes, this is my son, you know, this epic moment. And John the Baptist is watching all of it go on and it's like, wow. And he's, John the Baptist is realizing the whole reason why he was born. Mm -hmm. Right here. Right. I, I'm preparing the way for this guy. Right. Right? So all this is going on, 
this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. And Jesus goes into the wilderness, filled with the Holy Spirit, right? He goes into the wilderness. First thing the enemy does, where's he going? Identity. Right. If you are the son of God. Man, that place (laughs) that God healed and God restored, that's the first place. Don't think that when you come out of something that that's not going to be the first place the enemy tries to attack. Absolutely. And that's where you're really going to have to walk through not just that spirit healing, Mm -hmm. but that emotional healing. You're going to have to line up your soul with your spirit to have the... Tanya would probably say gumption, right? <laughs> yeah. To have the gumption, right? To walk through that. Yeah. Because now it's like, okay, I'm a new creation, but guess what? A new creation means this. Now I got to have a new mind. Exactly. I got to have the mind of Christ, which means I can't go back into those patterns of thinking. Exactly. Right? Exactly. All right. Good stuff. All right. So we talked about this a, a bit two weeks ago with trauma. Right. But what do we say to those? who feel they don't deserve this suffering servant that we've been talking about, this right. healing. Well, I mean, on the, on the surface, you're right. We, uh, mankind doesn't deserve this healing. Um, go back to verse 4. It says, We esteemed him stricken, smitten by God. Literally, mankind, they looked at the face of the suffering servant, and they go, that's on you, dude. Yet, that's not um, the mindset that God had. Like, he didn't view that as, as an insult necessarily. Jesus is on the cross, and he's literally suffering for us, and people are mocking him, saying, just pull yourself off the cross. If you're really the Son of God, have an angel come heal you. Have him come if bring you him. are the Son of God. There Attacking it is that again, entity. man. Exactly. Attacking that entity. But he didn't. He did not get off the cross. Why? Well, because of what we see in verse 5. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. Wow. And... With his wounds, we are healed. With this suffering servant, with what we have happening here, he brings us, because he took this chastisement, because he took the punishment, he brought us peace, which is that salvation aspect of that. But then he's like, well, out of that peace, now that you have a moment of clarity, let's work on bringing you full healing. Yeah, and that word chastisement, I mean, we've been walking through this whole thing of what mm-hmm. words mean. That word chastisement means correction. Right. The correction for our peace mm-hmm. was upon him. Exactly. <laughs> like everything we did in our life to create chaos, the corrective measure of that was put on Jesus. Exactly. So that we could now have peace, which Jesus goes on to talk about in the New Testament. The thing that he left, mm-hmm. the people when he left, was what? Peace. Right. My peace, right? Mm-hmm. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it. Mm -hmm. Again, talking about good in the world's eyes, good in God's eyes. Right. Not like the world gives it, but I give it to you. Right. right? He even talks about that um, that uh, the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. Right. Peace, the peace of God. We say it here all the time, man. (laughs) Peace isn't just a characteristic; it's a what. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> it is a lifestyle, and it is a weapon that you can use. Right. It is a weapon against the enemy, because when he does come mm-hmm. and say, hey, you, if you are a child of God, why do you still think this way? Mm-hmm. Why did you say that the other day? Mm-hmm. Why did you act that? When he comes, don't react to the enemy in the flesh. Right. Right? Come from that place of peace. Exactly. We don't react. We respond in the spirit. Right. Exactly how Jesus did when he was in the wilderness. He didn't respond with fleshly statements and and getting mad and angry. Right. He came back with the word of God. He came back with the things of the spirit. Absolutely. So Dallas, we've kind of walked through um all of this and Isaiah 53 has so much more to say but we want to kind of keep it within the context of our promise because listen read the entire chapter of Isaiah 53 Absolutely. it is a it is a it it just kind of walks through not just Jesus but it walks through us mm-hmm. who we were right what we needed and in order to know what he needed to be then we need to know what we were. Exactly. When we when we realize what we are, then we realize we need all those people. It's like if you're living a sinful lifestyle, sometimes you don't see the repercussions kind of in the heavenly realms. All you see is the natural. Right. But when you have an encounter with the presence of God, your eyes are opened up, and now you start seeing things you didn't see before. Mm-hmm. And so 
when you're walking through this, don't just think and be focused on just who Jesus is, but what it's saying that we are right. and why we had such a need for this suffering servant. So Dallas, I know there's a lot of great ways we can illustrate the nature of God's healing power and 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 through love and forgiveness and, and his stripes healing us. Um, but there is a there is a way today that we could illustrate this that God gave us right. and Jesus instituted it. Exactly. And so what is that? And that's communion. That's the, what we're looking at is doing communion. We're gonna do that today. And um, earlier this week, we put out there on social media to have your communion elements ready to go. Uh, so if you didn't, pause <laughs> and go grab some from the kitchen. And but, whatever you have. Right. Listen, I, I remember last year during COVID, it's like some people were like, hey, all I had was pineapple juice and uh, <laughs> cookies or like people were using all kinds whatever of stuff. Whatever you can find. So whatever you can find. It's almost yeah. like Tanya and I, we were looking for anointing oil one time to anoint the girls and we didn't have any, we didn't have any olive oil or anything. Right. Tanya's like. Crisco, here I come. There you go. She put her finger in there with Crisco, and we put it on the girls' heads. Why did we put it on their head? They were sick. Yeah. And we were proclaiming this right here, by his stripes, they are healed. So whatever you guys have, right. it's fine. It this, this isn't the actual body of Jesus. It's not. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> that this isn't the actual body, but it represents, it's a representative because his body was bred for us. Exactly. It was. This cup is not the actual blood of Jesus, thank the Lord, (laughs) but it is representative of the most valuable commodity on the earth, and that is the blood of Jesus. Right, absolutely. So that's what we're going to do, is we're going to take communion together, and um, and when we do this, um, we want you guys to understand this is a um, representation of his life and his death, but it's also a, um, a proclamation of, I'm going to walk out this healing. I'm going to live this out. Maybe, maybe you're though you're you're struggling with some of the stuff. Maybe you're you're struggling with some uh, some healing issues right now. Maybe you're dealing with some some sin issues in your life. I want to encourage you. Give those over to the Lord right now. Mm-hmm. Give those to Him. Let Him bring healing to you today and in this moment as you watch this stream. Mm-hmm. Don't turn off the stream. Don't walk away from this and just having had a snack before lunch today. Walk away from this whole and made complete. If you're going to make a phone call, I'm telling you, please pause the stream. Mm. Make a phone call to a friend, to a family member, whoever it is you need to talk to. And maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to forgive somebody. Mm. Make these things right before you take this communion with us so together good. today. So, all right, well, let's get into this. Um, we're going to bless the, the bread first. This bread represents the, the body of Christ represents the, the life that he lived for us, how he, uh, not just the, the sacrifice, but how he lived as an example to us of what it meant to be a man or a woman of God, mm-hmm. to be in that, to be the identity that we're called to be. Mm-hmm. So we're going to bless this real quick. God, we just thank you so much for this bread. We thank you that um, thank you. what it represents, the life, the perfect life thank that your son has lived. Jesus, thank you for being an example to to us all. Thank you for being an example of what it means to to love our Lord God, to um, to love our neighbors, to be who we were created to be. And I pray, Lord, as we take this, God, the way that we walk in the healing that you've offered us, we walk in the hope that you offer us, and then that we're challenged to live what you have called us to live. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. So let's take this. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Was it you said once? Mm, good bread. <laughs> it's amazing that thinking of it as uh, the representation of Jesus makes that styrofoam so much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> he takes it to another level. Oh, man. Pastor, will you bless the cup for us? Sure. Um, I don't know about you guys, but every time I look at the cup, I just can't think. Uh, I can't help but think of um, the day Tanya and I gave our life to Jesus and how having a revelation of who he is and then who we are in him. It just changed everything for us. And when I see the cup, I'm just reminded that the destiny of my children kind of hinged on that moment Mm -hmm. and how really my whole entire life and my children and my soon-to-be grandchildren Mm -hmm. hinged on the cross with Jesus and, and the blood. And that's for you too. If you've been walking through it, Uh, maybe under a generational bondage 
that you think you just have to continue doing that because your father did it or your mother did it or your grandparents did it. You don't have to do that. The blood of Jesus cleanses all that. By his stripes, you, you are healed and your kids can be healed and your grandkids can be healed and that can stop with you today. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you for the cup today. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for everything that it means. We thank you that the stripes that were upon your body, not just your back, but your entire body, Lord, what was laid upon you as blood came out of your body. Lord, we thank you that that blood wasn't simply a fleshly blood coming out of a human body, but it was a cleansing stream. It was a... Um, it was a sacrifice before the creator of the heavens and the earth. And in that sacrifice, the sins of humanity were taken by one man. And Jesus, we thank you that there's no one else who could have done this. No one else who could have taken that on. No one else, God and man. No one else, Emmanuel, God with us, but it was you, Jesus, and you fulfilled all the prophetic promises of the Old Testament. You fulfilled it all. And Lord, we thank you. You're still fulfilling it today, and you will continue to fulfill it until that day that we are completely and totally and absolutely like you in all ways. We thank you for the blood and the promise and the hope that it brings to not just me, but all of humanity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.